Kia ora ECU whanau, Angela Bush here from ECU Learning Unlimited. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm going to be talking with you about a subject that I'm hearing a lot more about in the social media platforms and just on the ground in general, which I'm actually really saddened to hear about, and that is bullying in the workplace. In the early childhood education landscape, that's becoming more and more heard of, um, which is just such a shame. And I think that it's time that we learned a bit more about it so we can understand it and manage it and hopefully help to reduce it. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Ainsley Pellerette from Fix HR, who is uh, an amazing, energetic, enthusiastic, passionate, knowledgeable person working in HR. And she's going to share with us her knowledge and expertise around this topic and give us some pointers for how we can navigate through as ECE leaders and teachers and get a better understanding of exactly what bullying is and if we feel that we are being bullied, what we can do about that, or also as leaders and managers, how we can deal with that if we come across it in our workplace. So let's get stuck in and have a call at all with Ainsley Pellerette from Fix HR. Good morning, Fano. It's my great pleasure today to be introducing to you Ainsley Pellerette from Fix HR. Good morning, Ainsley. How are you today? Good morning, Angela. It's a beautiful morning in Auckland. Doing well, thank you. Great. Look, Ainsley, let's get stuck into this um, conversation. I'm really looking forward to talking with you today. It's going to be a, a hot topic, I know, but let's start with you first of all. Tell me about Ainsley Pellerette and how you've come to be in HR. So I had the amazing privilege of working for a big company, setting up and growing the first few years of a big HR company that looked after HR and health and safety. And during those four and a half years, I was able to sit with almost 4,000 business owners and hear the burdensome stories of running a business, managing, uh, you know, um, uh, cash flow as well as, you know, uh, all the logistics and all of the staff and all of the overheads and everything that a business owner has to carry and then on top of that, many times, really painful stories of being taken advantage of or being challenged anyway at some level by their staff. And I just felt very strongly this should be better for business owners. They carry all of the risk and they're running a business without usually having had any background in HR. I often say to people, to get a driver's license, you need to learn how to drive and pass a test. But to set up a business, nobody's teaching you how to really, you know, recruit well, onboard well, manage your people lawfully, exit well when that day comes. So I wanted to do something about that. And so that was the beginning of Fix HR 2020, an exciting ride since then. I bet it has been. And uh, I can certainly relate to what you're talking about there, about business owners coming into um, a business ownership role where you wear so many different hats all at the same time and you're not necessarily skilled or trained in certain aspects of those, particularly in, in business management and, and human resource management and people management. We come usually with our own skill set in our, in our technical area, but not necessarily in people management. I think particularly in areas where relationships matter, people assume when I am good and kind and generous and we relate well, my HR is in order. But that is a false assumption because there's a piece of law in place, rules and regulations that talk about how things should be done. And without really having a good handle on that and being able to evidence that you've got a good handle, your beautiful relationships and your generosity and your time and commitment, they count for very little too often. I hear you. I hear you. And uh, as a business owner myself, I understand that um, often th there's a lot of fear around some of the law and the complexity of it. And, and we want to do the right thing. I think that most of us genuinely want to do the right thing. and um, But there are times that we can get caught out and misunderstanding what the rules are and what we are allowed to do and what we should be doing and um, what are the right things and what are the lawful things to be doing. So tell me about Fix HR and what you do 
for business owners? So we start again, usually start again with the documents that are in place in a small business. Ordinarily, those documents have been sort of um, uh, patched together, sort of nailed in a little bit late or or at least after the fact and after some other ones have been uh, put in place. So they're a little bit piecemeal. So we start again with things like employment agreements. We really like having a handbook of policies so that they're tailored to each business so that they can be updated from time to time at the sole discretion of the employer rather than needing to go back to an employment agreement, which needs to be renegotiated if it's changed. We also supply a bundle of letters and forms and tools. They're all useful things. To be fair, Angela, you can access those things if you knew what to look for online. I'm not trying to pretend that we do some sort of crazy reinvention of the wheel. There's no need to do that. Mm. But letters and forms and tools that are going to be really useful with lovely branding. They look good. They make our businesses look good. Um, But the key tailored area is those employment agreements and that handbook. And then so we understand the business and we launch those documents with a masterclass for our clients. And then we've got ongoing support because changes are only constant so that when the circumstances in the business change, somebody leaves, somebody comes, somebody something goes on, um, or th- things change in parliament, legislation changes, or things change in court, help us understand exactly what that piece of law is going to be interpreted as then we're available for our clients um, uh, during business hours at the level to which they uh, need and appreciate. So that's Fix HR in a nutshell. Sounds fabulous, Ainsley. And uh, I think there sounds like there's some good opportunities there for people who, um, like you say, we're often uh, number eight wire, sticky tape. Let's just (laughs) write a bit of a policy here or, or can put together an employment agreement, but it's not necessarily... Um, going to meet the mark that we should be. So it sounds like there's some really useful tools that you've got there. I think so. And our clients appreciate it. I know that. So so I love what we're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. So we'll put some details about how to get in touch with Fix HR at the in the notes for anyone that would like to and also at the end of this um, recording. Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks, Ainsley. So let's get stuck into our topic today, which is a really... Um, Sad, um, I'm sad that we even have to have this conversation, I have to say, but it's, it's, I'm hearing it a lot, particularly in the early childhood education space. Um, it's the word bullying is being bandied around a lot, is being utilised a lot more than I ever have in 30 years of being in ECE. I'm hearing it more and more at the moment. So it's really quite concerning. Um, and for staff in particular. And so, Ainsley, can you help us to understand what this is about a bit more? So personally, I believe uh, that a big contributor here is the uh, the momentum that's being built up toward the power that employees have. So what I mean by that is in the media and 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 uh, in the parks and uh, uh, on on forums online, there's more and more talk of it. And so that generates more and more talk and more and more availability for employees to wave a bullying flag or a harassment flag, even just on the off chance that it might get them some quick money. So if we took money out of the middle of this, Angela, my personal opinion is this would be a different conversation we'd be having. But right now there is a lot of money in settlements around this issue. And so getting ahead of that for a centre owner has a lot of merit. Um, So, yeah, it is, though, a a very real uh, issue for business owners and for staff that they can be in a situation where they are being bullied. And alongside... uh, there being money that can be made pretty quickly, it's like a winning lottery ticket, is increased awareness in society about the importance of our mental health, about the importance of actually having a right to go to work happy and enjoying a day's work 
feeling like you're giving your gift and that gift is being appreciated and recognized. And, uh, and so all of that is plays into um, <clears throat> this conversation about bullying. There are those two sides. And I think we need to acknowledge and recognize that there are those two sides. Yeah, and uh, I have no doubt that there's really genuine cases of mm. bullying that, that go on out there. So help me understand, Ainsley, can we have a definition of what bullying in the workplace actually is? Because I think that there can be some misunderstanding about how employees may feel they're being bullied versus how employers think they're treating people. What is the definition of bullying in the workplace? Critical question. The uh, Employment Relations Act talks about bullying as repeated and unreasonable. So that is not a conversation we're having about performance or about a particular event. It's repeated unreasonable treatment. It can be top down. It can also be bottom up, make no mistake. Repeated unreasonable behavior. So it can be a... Uh, uh, all sorts of things, undermining somebody in front of children or parents or other staff, um, uh, outing somebody or excluding somebody, f- sort of making a fool of somebody, sometimes nicknames. We can think we're being kind of funny, but does everybody in the room think that's funny, particularly the person who's received that nickname? Um gossip, rumours, things that are ongoing, ongoing, not the one-off losing of our temper because that can happen. That is not considered bullying or harassment by the court. Um, Swearing, ranting, heavy kind of a little bit like you're a sergeant major, ongoing treatment would be considered that uh, if it ever came to being judged. Yeah? Yeah. Taking credit for somebody else's work repeatedly can, has also stood up as unacceptable behaviour in the way we're treating one another. Okay. Does it also include, Ainsley, things around employment agreements and conditions and um, perhaps saying one thing but doing another or not meeting lawful employment conditions? Is that considered bullying too? Uh, if there was an employer that someone could prove they weren't meeting their obligations, it would be rare that the claim would be bullying or harassment. It would be unfair disadvantage, a claim for something uh, unreasonable or, yeah. So unlikely that that would go to that bullying and harassment space. Make no mistake, Angela, there is facility with a bullying and harassment claim to go to work safe not be just addressed in that employment space. Uh, A work safe claim, my space was unsafe. That could result in enormous results for an employer. So what we would love to do is prevent that from ever coming up as a threat that an employer would be dealing with. Okay, then uh, on that basis, Ainsley, how can, how can people, employees and employers, really gauge because is this actually happening here? Is this actually happening to me? Because I think one of the things that, one of the first things that people might often do is feel that self-doubt. Is this actually really happening to me here? You're, you're really right about that. So I mentioned before, Angela, that we have uh, an employment agreement and we have a handbook. This is not something we have a, a, a monopoly on. This is a good way to run a business. Um, the employment agreement gives teeth to this handbook. Uh, and in the handbook, I strongly recommend a policy on bullying and harassment. These are not easy to write, but a policy ahead of time that defines what we as a centre consider behavior that would be bullying and what we would consider as harassment. So defining terms exactly like we talked about in sensitive jokes and pranks, lewd or abusive comments um, about appearance, for example, we're defining that. You don't have to have about appearance. Anything lewd or ab- abusive, you know, that's bullying. That's not fun. Um, deliberate exclusion, displaying abusive or offensive writing or material, 
unwelcome touching. So define what bullying would be and define what would be um, harassment and also define in that policy the procedure that your centre has has outlined as a really reasonable and effective procedure to follow if you're feeling vulnerable. So we would suggest the first step is if you're feeling vulnerable, if you're unhappy with something, to approach a friend uh, or just to just to go straight in and say, hang on a minute, we are not children. I have a, a voice and an opinion and I, I really would prefer that we weren't joking like that or that you didn't do that either to me or to my colleague so that amongst ourselves as adults, we can actually put to bed a lot of these things. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a policy as a centre that says that's our first step, people, we're objectively presenting this as the way we operate, that empowers people, it should empower people to have those conversations, to say, yeah, not so funny, you know? Yeah. So in early childhood education, we will have a complaints uh, procedure as well that would sit alongside uh, oh. those other um frameworks you were just talking about there too which is useful for people to know what to do which is actually my next question to you then Ainsley so if I've gauged that I think I'm being bullied in the workplace whether I'm the employer or the employee what would you advise people do what are the next steps what is the process that they should follow to manage that yes so if that first conversation didn't put this thing to bed nice and professionally professionalism is a really important word, actually. So uh, I might use it a number of times. But given that, worst case scenario, our entire process could be reviewed either by a mediator or in the employment court, and we all understand that it can end up there. Then the more professionally we manage things from the beginning, the the more confident we can be. So um, if... In the beginning, that conversation didn't settle this. Uh, When you raise the fact that we could have a, um, there are two very different tracks. If it's an employer being bullied, we need to come and come back and have another conversation. What I want to talk about today and uh, probably the clearest thing to talk about is when an employee is lodging a formal complaint or claim that they are being bullied. So they They've, they can prove that they've tried to attend to this themselves. By the time a centre owner gets that complaint, they must take this very seriously. They need to set aside time. They need to open a file. They need to record what's gone on and they need to run an investigation. At some point, it could be useful to get an external party involved. Uh, you'll know your people and you'll know your centre uh, you'll know whether this is not a mage, we can put this to bed ourselves, or I actually want to make sure this is very efficient. It's a little bit like when you call in the doctor, isn't it? Mm. Can I put up with my sore shoulder? Yeah, I'll give it a week. If it's still sore in a week, I'm going to get some expert help. Some framework like that is useful. So if if an employee takes uh, sorry, has a, an issue with their employer who is yes. bullying them, yes. Who do they speak to? How do they get support? Yes. How do they deal with this? You're right that the manager, it's oftentimes a manager in a centre who Mm. is the problem. Mm -hmm. So that employee should be able to go to the centre owner. If that centre owner is the problem, Mm -hmm. uh, they could go to their manager. If there's no one that they have that is available, they are likely to get some external help from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So that will come in the form of uh, an advocate who gets in touch with management to say you've got an employee with an issue. They have tried to resolve this issue themselves and they've come to me because it's been unsuccessful. So Mm. that's that's their process. Mm. Do you think, Ainsley, it's appropriate for, if in this situation, if an employee comes to the employer and asks to speak to them about uh, a bullying situation, who should be in that conversation? Is it appropriate for the um, management to have more than one person in that meeting and only the, the 
complainant coming or should there be support people? You know, what's the safety around this for everybody? Yeah. It, this is not a disciplinary matter. So it isn't processed in the same way as a disciplinary meeting would be processed, which is to say, uh, advise the employee that they have the right to bring a support person, get that in writing so that we can evidence that we did that, mm -hmm. understand what the meeting is about beforehand so everyone's got a chance to be prepared. This is a different kind of a meeting. Angela, support people can be very helpful. Support people can also escalate things beyond what uh, was required. So... Mm -hmm. Proceed with caution around this. If the centre owner feels vulnerable, they have every entitlement to have a support person with them there. There's no problem with that. If the bullied person wants to have a support person, again, that makes all the sense in the world. But there are certain things you can do in that meeting to mean that neither of those things are required. I would strongly recommend that you uh, at least take notes. Note the time, who's there, what we're talking about, get it out on the table. We're going to just take some notes. Just say, as the centre owner, I'm responsible for this. I don't want um, to miss anything. I'm here to help you, and I'm going to just write some notes. The other option is that you record the meeting. That's all very lawful in terms of the Privacy Act, so long as you say, I'm going to record this meeting and, and then say, press record and say, we all understand this meeting's being recorded, it's held where, when, whatever. So those couple of things can help reduce the need or requirement to have additional people around the room because, um, in all honesty, the more people, the more formal, the more escalated the whole thing is, the harder it is to control. We can quite uh, simply address many things by beautiful communication, people feeling heard and understood and, and some simple things being put in place. And that's absolutely lawful and many times all that's required. I can, yeah, and I... I um, I think it's a great strategy you've suggested there, Ainsley, to record the meeting because I know that... Um, oftentimes there can be the concern that there's going to be a he said, she said. And, and, and it's a highly emotive conversation. Yes. It's really difficult for employees to come and have a brave conversation yes. and, and talk about this. And it can be equally just, um, emotional and difficult for a manager, depending on how experienced they are and how capable they are to have this conversation. And I think sometimes things can be said that are misunderstood, misinterpreted, or forgotten in the heat or the emotion of the emo of this conversation, whether it gets heated or not, but it, it can it just can be very fearful and emotional. And and it can, if it's not recorded, both parties can equally go away from that conversation and forget parts of it. Um, our memory's oh, not great, let's face it, when we're under pressure. Yep. So um, I think that's a really great strategy you've talked about there. And that kind of leads into the next question that I actually had, Ainsley, which was, was to ask, how can we ensure we are keeping ourselves as employers and also our employees safe, but also upholding high standards and expectations? And where I'm going with that one, Ainsley, is... For example, we're required to give our staff um, regular feedback, particularly qualified teachers around their um, teacher certification. We need to observe, give feedback. And sometimes that's really critical feedback that's difficult for people to receive. But um, sometimes I have seen a misunderstanding of critical feedback interpreted as bullying. So how do we all make sure we're keeping ourselves safe keeping mm. our employees safe, but still upholding high expectations mm. and standards. Mm. I do believe that def having a clear definition of what we've accepted in our centre constitutes bullying and harassment should really put that accusation or complaint to bed. It is also a matter of making sure that we really are managing beautifully those constructive feedback sessions and that training and, 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 and whatever, that we take care 
to make those as positive as we can within reason. It is true that we sometimes need to offer some constructive criticism. We're paying people to do a job. We're paying them great money. And if we keep on seeing repeated issues that we're unable to break through, it, it is tough as a business owner. But that is a very separate um, conversation. Managing performance, uh, reviewing performance is a very different thing to, uh, to, to bullying and harassment. When a centre manager is doing their very best to do that well and there is still an accusation, the centre manager needs to do a couple of things. One is potentially have somebody in that meeting so that that protects them and also somebody that can give them some feedback. You know what? They're right. Mm. Uh, or you know what? That was absolutely reasonable. And then that centre manager is either being trained themselves as they're wanting to do for their staff, at, but they've also got the backup. No, we're not accepting that. And, and so bringing somebody in after the first accusation is a great idea there. Uh, because, in fact, those two things should have nothing to do with each other. Um, training somebody, forming them, shaping them, improving them, giving them a career uh, progression is nothing to do with, um, you know, treating somebody badly. So it, it, there should be no crossover there. No, but I th unfortunately, I think in the early childhood space, um, they do relationships are quite close. Mm -hmm. um, and relationships are everything in early childhood education because teachers are relating to children and families and colleagues and and mm -hmm. and so the, it's deeply embedded in, in how we work and, and how we are every day in the workplace and so there can be some some crossover and some misunderstandings I think sometimes that can uh, blur the boundaries a little bit between disciplinary uh, matters and constructive feedback and and guidance of people and bullying. But like you say, if there are very clear understandings and you've you've got some you've got a policy, you've got very clear definitions as a team. This is what bullying means looks like here, and this is what it is, and this is what we're not going to tolerate. Or these are the things we're going to agree that we're not going to do. Yes. Then then it's it makes a very clear pathway for people, doesn't it? And makes it easier to keep keep everybody safe. It should do. I, I appreciate, Angela, that it is an incredibly relational sort of a space. Um, maybe taking advantage of some of the reflective practices that are in the centres to be able to say, you know, I, I don't enjoy those meetings because I'm not, I feel vulnerable rather than, uh, rather than uh, trained or rather than, um, you know, uh, the meeting being constructive. I've come away feeling really demotivated or, or or discouraged those there are platforms within the EC environment usually where when somebody's brave they could raise that um there are no silver bullets <laughs> Angela really there aren't but there are some things that reduce the risks uh and making sure there's a clear definition of what this meeting is about what we're about to do, how it will finish, how you can feed back to me about that meeting, uh, particularly when we're not talking just a, a maintenance performance appraisal, but we are talking performance improvement planning. Um, all of those things are uh, delicate matters. And, um, yeah, d defining them, taking notes, getting other people involved where necessary, um, honesty, uh, our, our emotional, you know, our EQ, dialing it up when we need to, um, stopping a meeting when we need to. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm feeling upset. I think, well, let's put a pin in it. Can we come back tomorrow? We'll finish this meeting. Mm. Uh, particularly the person who's running the meeting. Uh, very good idea. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's a much better idea than later having a big regret about, ah, oh, I let that get out. <laughs> out of hand you know yeah there's a whole other skill set there and I feel like there's a whole other conversation for us to have <laughs> here yeah. Ainsley around how to um how to manage disciplinary matters and um um how to manage that whole process that's a whole other conversation isn't it so let's 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 um book that in for another day <laughs> it's a it's a it's, a, it's a, every 
every thread of discipline is different. And so it's not something that we have got really easy broad brush steps around, but there there are some good tips and tricks. And yes, that's that's a it's a good idea. Almost always it's a great idea to get somebody else involved when things get that difficult, honestly. It's not what we got into business for was, oh, Fix HR did, but business owners didn't. So no. get in some help at that point. Because We're not experts. We're not no, experts. That, that and it can in. drag on and it can just make things not fun for anybody. Worse for everybody. We don't yep. want to make it worse for the employee, but right. and we also don't right. want to make it worse for ourselves or anybody right. else. And, and it right. can, exactly right. Yeah, just get really ugly. So, so Ainsley, how can how can Fix HR help people in ECE leaders and teachers if they are in a bullying situation? Yeah, how, how can you help? It's interesting that you've raised that discipline because ultimately. If there is a bully in your workplace, they must be disciplined. You cannot ignore it. Your responsibility under the Health and Safety at Work Act means that you must act. And so that opens the door widely for Fix HR to come and get alongside that business owner and step them through. So we would go back, as I said, and look at what documents are in place. If all we can do, because there's urgency, is use those documents, we will. Ideally, we've got some margin to be able to introduce really effective documentation to give that business owner some tools in the toolkit to address that behaviour and or exit that bully. Because we all know the negativity, the, 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 the consequences of that bullying harassment on the whole business are all about morale, you know, it's yeah. important. It's corrosive. If if employees, if there's an, a bully amongst the employee yes. group and and the manager or the centre owner does nothing about that and yes. doesn't manage that, it's yes. very corrosive to the whole team and that's where you'll get staff turnover and churn. Exactly. Turnover was what I was going to say. Turnover, stress, um, you know, people are not give, going the extra mile. They work to rule. And, and that's just a bad culture in a centre. Nobody wants that. So we won't go into this today, but ultimately if it is uncovered that somebody is behaving as a bully and are given a chance to modify their behaviour, but they do not, that is absolutely cause for discipline, not risk-free for the business owner. None of this is without its risks, but it must be addressed. Man, yeah. a bit like surgery. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, in terms of what Fix HR can do for centres in general is get this uh, legal floor in place for if the next hire becomes the bully, you know you've got some tools in the toolkit, you know you've got the support to be able to address that, you know you can get onto as safe ground as possible determining what we're addressing and how we're doing it and do that really well so that if it's ever reviewed, either by a mediator or a court, we've got nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to be worried about, which is a big mm. thing. Mm. And for an employee, Ainsley, who are, who are definitely uh, feeling bullied and they've taken all the steps that you've suggested, what do they do next? <laughs> who do they you're go asking me to, You're asking me to cross the sides because, I, I mean, there is, there's a lot of help available for them. There's help around... Um, the ECE community, there are resources for them. There are all sorts of resources that sometimes advertise on the side of the motorway and on the radio. Um, <laughs> they, they should not, they don't need to keep putting up with that. Uh, mm. They should seek help, uh, open up and ask some trusted people around them. Mm. They, there is plenty of help out there. Um, our concern, of course, is for employers who have the responsibility to manage this little little thing beautifully to, to help them to do that and, and to be above reproach. And so that's that's the role of Fix HR. Fantastic. Thanks, Angie. So how do people get in touch with Fix HR if they find themselves in this situation or if they just need some Fix HR help in general? So our website is very easy, www.fixhr.co.nz. 
Uh, all of our contact details are there. In fact, there's a very easy process to just record to say, I'd love to catch up with you and we'll run a Zoom or we're meeting on Teams. So um, easy as that. You could also just give me a call if you'd like. I love it when my phone rings. So my number is 022 393 3557. And yeah, uh, we're here to help. We're really motivated to to make workplaces safe and happy and fun as possible under the Employment Relations Act. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today, Ainsley. I learned a lot there and I certainly know that uh, I'm going to be going away and thinking about uh, bullying policy and defining that more clearly in our workplace. So thanks so much for your time and uh, have a great day. Thanks for for your time. It's been lovely chatting to you, Angela. Thanks for your time. Bye, Ainsley. Bye-bye.